What's up everyone, thanks for tuning in. So on this video, I'm going to be adapting my 96 Honda Civic EX trim front brakes onto my 1988 Honda Accord LXI trim vehicle. So to get this out of the way, for those of you guys who want to know, the 1986 through 87 Honda Accord all trims, DX, LX, LXI, all utilize a nine and a half inch front rotor and rear drums in the back. For 1988 through 89, DX and LX trims, they also use the nine and a half inch front rotor, rear drums in the back. However, in 1988 through 89, the LXI, the fuel injected model, updated to 10.3 inch or 10 and a quarter inch front rotors and keeping the same rear drums in the back. 88 through 89 SCI trim uses the same 10.3 front rotor and rear discs in the back. It's the only third generation Honda Accord trim that came from factory equipped with rear discs. Thus that model will also be using a different prop valve as well as master cylinder. I'm unsure if all the brake boosters throughout all the trims and years are the same. So please let me know down in the comments below on that one. So for those of you guys that have done deep dives on like brake conversions or brake upgrades or whatever that utilize within an Acura or Honda world, you guys would know how confusing that can be sometimes of just like, because everything's so isolated within trims, years, and such, you know, a lot of other stuff. So hopefully this video will give you a good representation, a visual representation of like what it takes to at least get started on this because from this conversion that I'm about to do, you guys can also upgrade to a bigger, like the Type R size brakes or maybe gold like dual piston brakes if you want to and so on and so forth. This just kind of opens the door to give a more uh, somewhat modern or uh, not lesser, I'm trying to think of a word to describe this. For as old as these Accords are, if you were to need parts like that day, uh, at least where I'm at, it'd be way easier telling them, hey, I need brakes for a Civic than it would be for like some 80, 80s Accord, if that makes any sense. So hopefully that helps. And without further ado, let's get this started. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna start taking all this stuff off. The first thing I like to start on is removing the two 10 millimeter bolts that hold the brake line. You got two 12 mils back here, one here, one here. You don't necessarily have to take them off now. I just like to do it because it's easier with the bracket already mounted onto the knuckle right now. Other bolt back here, you're gonna be one up top here. This is gonna be 17 millimeter. And then the other one, it's gonna be right down there. You guys can see it. 17 millimeters. So usually I just like to break both of the brackets loose first, or sorry, both bolts on the caliper bracket first. I like to break them loose first and then just start working them off and then take them off. Take the front rotor off and I'll give you guys a comparison. Also, while it's on, I'll give you guys an idea of what the spacing of the rotor to the caliper is. So this is, a, as you guys can see, the factory Accord caliper and the not the factory rotor, hopefully it's not the same rotor from 88, but it is the 10.3 inch spec disc on them right now. So hopefully you guys can see what it looks like. So when I put the Civic stuff on, you will see the difference. So when you bust these screws loose to take the disc off, make sure you use, I know there's a name for it, but use these fatter tipped screw bits, screwdriver bits. If you use like your more traditional skinnier ones, you will strip those out. All right guys, so what we have on the left is the Accord rotor and then the Civic rotor. Yes, these are aftermarket, but they're both the same diameter, 10.3 inches. And I did not choose to get these drilled and soldered rotors, so do not judge me on that. <laughs> so here is the Accord um, caliper bracket and then the Civic caliper bracket. You guys can see just the quick visual differences. How the brake pads sit in there. However, let me do this and show you guys. Uh, probably not, but take my word for it. The mounting points are both the same. These will mount onto the Accord spindles. There's the caliper for the Civic. So, for those of you guys wondering, okay, why does there need to be some sort of uh, modification need to be made on adapting the Civic to the Accord knuckle to make it work. Well, here's the thing. It looks almost exactly the same, right? Even the points where the screws go into to mount the rudder to the knuckle are in the same exact spots. Check this out. 
you notice how on the left the Accord rotor is taller than the Civic one here on the right. So I measured it out. There's about a quarter, uh, about a quarter inch difference. And it, yes, it all matters. So me mounting this on, it is going to sit flusher onto the knuckle, which means it's going to hit the bracket, which it does. And I'll show you guys what I mean here in a second. I'll do a side by side comparison of what happens if you were to put only the rotor and you utilizing the either Civic brake bracket or the Accord bracket. Doesn't really matter, you're gonna get the same results. Okay, so I got the Civic rotor on right now. I got the Civic um, caliper bracket on now. I don't know why it's so hard for me to remember that. <laughs> so this thing should be free spinning, right? It will not spin. Oh, there it goes. But it is locked up and it's a neutral right now. The reason for that is you guys can see it is rubbing on the inner portion right here and to top that off quick second grab a light so you guys can see it better you guys can get a good angle i'm trying to get you guys to see it okay actually correction it's not rubbing up there, it's rubbing on top right here. So at first glance, I'd be like, oh cool, I'll just grind that down. But then the more I looked at it, cause I kinda did it blind when I first tried doing this. Look at that gap. And that's with the 17 millimeter bolts all torqued down and everything. So then, yeah, I just knew something wasn't right when I first tried doing this, cause I was, I was under the impression it was all just, oh yeah, quick bolt on, but it sure ain't. All right, so then I'm gonna throw this on just to show you guys what if you were to use the Civic rotor or disc with the Accord caliper bracket. Okay, here it is with the Accord caliper bracket. And I, I just finger tightened the 17 millimeter bolts. So they're not fully tightened. And it's making full contact on the face of the rotor. So yeah, you can imagine it with pads and the rest of the caliper on it, you know, it, it's not gonna work. So I tried figuring out how I can make this work because I feel like it was just like, if that was just a problem, just distance of the rotor needing to be center lined with the caliper itself, I feel like that would be an easy fix. So what I did try was I had some extra, a whole bunch of these spacers lying around and I stacked them up to um, a total of three on top and bottom of the bracket, measured it out to be about a quarter inch. When I measured the height different, or the depth different, whatever, of the Accord rotor and the Civic rotor, it came out to be a quarter inch. So I told, so I was thinking, okay, quarter inch seems to be about a magic number, more or less, of how much space it needs for the rotor itself to spin freely and to have it as close to how the factory setup was already set up, if that makes any sense. <laughs> so I'm not gonna use spacers as a permanent option by any means to drive around with. So if you guys want to do that, go ahead and try doing that. I'm going to, or what I am planning on doing is this quarter inch thick steel flat bar. If you guys want to use aluminum, um, go ahead. If you want to spend the extra money and however you feel about aluminum and its strength compared to this. Um, I got this, so I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. Pretty much I'm going to, between the knuckle and the bracket, I'm going to measure it out, cut it, drill some holes into it, and then put this in between the bracket and the knuckle to space it out. And in theory, it should work. My test, again, as I just stated, I used these washers, three here, three here, mounted to the knuckle. That being said, I was not able to use the factory hardware, especially with the lock washer on there, or the crush washer, get new crush washers. I forgot to do that when I got these new bolts or over or right here so they are slightly longer as you can see again i tested this whole setup already mounting everything everything worked as stock when i did try again i did not test drive it though on this setup so if you're wondering what the size bolt specs are on this it is m12 by 30 1.25 pitch you're going to need a total of four you're going to do both sides two per bracket 
and as of right now you know what just to show you guys i'm gonna put i'm gonna use the washer okay got the flat bar mocked up i'm gonna mark it down with a sharpie so i can cut it to length cut this out put it back on there again see what's sticking out i'm gonna try to keep it to where it's flush with the actual knuckle itself on the mounting point stuff like that um, debatable whether or not I'm going to take the dust shield off or not because it is making contact with it. I'm kind of hoping that this it's not pushing the dust shield too far to where it'd be rubbing on the back of the rotor. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but if it is, then obviously I'm just going to take the dust shield off. Or, yeah, I'm just going to take the dust shield off if that's a problem. After that, I'm going to mark through the back mounting holes here and have fun drilling through this thing with a step bit. <laughs> okay, here's the... Uh bar cut don't have to worry about this because it's actually clearing it i could grind off a little material to keep it more flush probably do that later but as of right now i just marked the back off with sharpie so i can have the drill so i can drill through it for the mounts i have it flush right here top and bottom so i'm using for reference and i'm going to continue to drill the holes for the mounting the mounting hardware okay here's the bracket i made or sorry not bracket but the bracket spacer i could grind away and make it more cleaner make it more flush with the knuckle i'll do that later on but just show you guys what it looks like right now before i put everything back on okay and it's on at least the bracket is i'm going to spin this not touching anything of the bracket there's the clearance there's the adapter one quarter inch civic bracket 96 or 2000 civic ex the 10.3 10.3 inch front disc front rotor designated for Civics as well. Okay, I'm gonna throw the rest of the caliper on with the Civic brake pads. The Accord brake pads will not fit in here because of just how all this is set here. Ran into a problem. So I got the old pad. I'm gonna replace these pads with brand new ones for designated for the Civic, so don't worry about how much pad they have left. The rotor is still in good condition. There's a reason why I'm reusing this rotor. I'm gonna get new pads. Um, eventually, once I get all this figured out, I'm going to actually upgrade this from the 10.3 up to an 11 inch rotor utilizing CRV slash um, Type R front um, calipers. So I'll just talk about that towards the end of the video, but came across a problem. So here's the rear pad. So this little part right here is making, I cannot slide in fully because it's making contact with the actual adapter or spacer bar itself so two things i'm gonna end up doing i'm gonna mark it off i'm gonna nab off that little section right there so that can fit there worst case scenario um there really isn't any reason to like have the bar fully connected so worst case scenario i'm just gonna cut the bar and just use the small spacers up here and here just to space it out and not have it connected i kind of wanted it to be uh, no specific reason but if this is going to be obvious you know obviously a problem then i'm going to have to cut it off anyway to give room so i can fully seat this rear pad okay so it's been a couple of weeks i painted the caliper red i ordered some stop tech front stainless steel brake lines i did end up cutting the adapter bar so now it's just two separate pieces for top and bottom hopefully you guys can see that I got the uh, the Accord caliper as well as the OEM brake line still chilling right there just so it's not leaking brake fluid anywhere. I did test the brake lines for the Civic that I ordered, or sorry, for the Civic brake lines that I ordered. So they will, they will bolt up to there and they will also bolt up to the Accord caliper as well. So if you guys want to upgrade your OEM brake line setup still with like your Accord setup, it will work. Um, only reason why it's off now is because I was kind of 
kind of tripping out because this is actually my second set of StopTech brake lines. The first set I ordered for my 96 Civic EX and they they went in no problem. However, the lines that I got, same part number on the box, same everything, but however, the lines were a little bit shorter and the heads were a little bit different. So I was wondering if they actually sent me ones for the rears for like if I had rear discs, but cross-referencing, look at the part number, look at the uh, physical differences. I'm assuming StopTech up, updated their design. So it will work. Everything will work fine. Um, so yeah, I'm about to do that next step right now. Show you guys that and go from there. Everything's looking nicely. Okay, to remove the line on the back of the caliper, you're gonna have this, you need 14 millimeter, undo that. There's gonna be a uh, spacer or washer on either side. So one on this side of the brake line and one towards the back, towards the caliper side. So be careful when you pull that out. On this end, you're going to need an open end 10 millimeter. undo that, and then you're going to need something like either a screwdriver or anything to use to pry that guy off. This thing's holding it in place, and then once that comes off, the line comes off, and put on a new one. So then here's Stop Tech stainless steel brake line. Cool thing about this, I'm going to try to make this work, but this is for where you mount on the knuckle. So hopefully I can move this maneuver to where I can actually bolt it in place. Uh, if not, hopefully I can maneuver it in a way where it will not get pinched or interfere with any other moving part. So before you install this, the stop deck came with new hardware as well as the two new brass seals <clears throat> or brass spacers or washers, whatever you are going to need this or else it will leak. So this is how you set it up for reference. There you guys go. One side done. EK Civic brake calipers, quarter inch spacers, stainless steel brake line. All I gotta do now is do the other side, bleed the brakes, test her out. Just wanted to show you guys that you guys can put the Civic brakes on with the factory dust shield still on, unmodified. It's a really, really tight fit, but it is doable. Um, my suggestion is to, when you put the rotor on, do not bolt it down with these screws to the spindle. Let it loose so you can maneuver it away to where you can get this in over the rotor so you guys be able to thread the uh, bolts down to the caliper mount. And then everything's the same from there. So. Later on, when I upgrade the calipers and discs down the road on driver's side, I'm going to put the dust shield back on. You press. Release. Press. Release. All right, just doing a quick initial driveway test. Before I actually take this out on the road, and hopefully it stops. Okay, so it definitely does stop. <laughs> Test number one. So there's a lot of travel still. I don't know if there's maybe still air in the system or not. I mean, there was no bubbles when I bled at all, but. Yeah. All right, I'm taking on a quick drive around the block. Okay, so you did a quick check to see if anything was leaking on both driver's side and passenger side. Nothing was leaking, everything looks good. Now, I will say, didn't really get the results that I wanted to, but I might get used to it as time goes on. It's just, there definitely is a lot more play now between the time you start feeling the brakes start to engage. The car does stop now on a dime. Um, is it an upgrade from stock? I really wouldn't say yes to that. Um, mostly I'm sure the drums and stuff like that aren't really helping, but the whole system is bled. Um, I might re it again. Um, check it, but I mean, at least it's as good as stock, not any better. Um, again, it's very, there's a huge gap between where it starts feeling, but the only thing I can think of is since uh, now where they're spaced out on the mount itself, the only 
I guess you could say theory I have is there's an extra gap now between how much room there is between the pads actually grabbing on and the disc. So that's that free um, space that I'm feeling in that brake pedal. Um, I might actually just try to disconnect the brake booster and see how I feel about it, see if I might just go manual brakes. But in my past experience, I've never been a huge fan of manual brakes or anything without a brake booster. Um, that's just my opinion, my two cents. I know there's a lot of guys out there that run differently, but then again, they're running like really, really, you know, high class touchy brake setup. So that's not what I'm running here. Again, this is just another option of what brakes can be used. But um, feel free, if you guys have any suggestions, let me know down below. I'll, I'll probably try to bleed them again to see if I can get a more better response, but I don't think I'm gonna get any better than that. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, ask down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them as fast as I can when I can, the best way I can. So thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.